Welcome to the roof. I'll show you what's going on up here today. Well, I was really undecided as to whether I was gonna um, have this little garden up here this year because getting up and down the ladder, obviously, and doing the watering up here is a bit of a clot to say the least. Um, however, what I've got up here are carrots. I grow them up here because what I've discovered is that cat, well, I didn't discover this. Somebody else told me this and I've discovered it's true. Carrot root fly only fly three foot high. So if you have them somewhere else higher up, then the carrot root fly don't get at your carrots. I tried to grow carrots previously and every single time I tried, they were completely ruined um, by the carrot fly. So I tried this last year and it worked a treat. I had several bucket loads of carrots. At the end of it, the carrot fly apparently just can't fly up this high. Um, I know I could have just netted them and I, I was thinking about that, but actually I think I hate nets more than I hate ladders. So here we are again. I've got a variety of Nantes, carrots and Autumn King up here. I've sowed them obviously, you can see I've sowed them at different times, slightly staggered. Um, and I keep them on the ground until they germinate because you need to keep the soil nice and damp while they're germinating. So these last three buckets here, I've just brought these up yesterday or the day before. Um, uh, I sow very thickly and then I'll thin out um, once they come up to a certain level. I've already thinned out this bucket, but I think I'll have to thin it out again. Um, and the way I limit the amount of time I've got to come up here, initially I've got to come up quite a bit to keep them damp but once the roots get down a bit they're in these plastic trays um i've got like three buckets in each tray and i just put water in the bottom of the tray and they sit in that and there's holes i've drilled holes in the bottoms of the buckets um so it draws the water up um last year as you'll remember it was a very hot and dry summer and really it wasn't that bad i didn't have to come up here that often um definitely worth it you'd be amazed how many carrots you can grow in a bucket Anyway, today is bean plant, planting out day, so I'm just going to give these a quick water and then um, we're heading off up for the allotment. This is the patch where I am going to be planting the beans. It is right in the same border that my peas are growing in. Hopefully I have as much success with the beans as the peas because they are looking great. But as you can see, it's a bit overgrown with things. I've, gone, I've let that volunteer potato grow um, until I was ready to use the border and some chard. So I'm going to take those out now. I'm going to see if there's any potatoes under that plant, which would be quite nice. Well, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the earliest potato reveal ever. And it might not even be a potato reveal. It might just be a few shoots coming out of the ground with nothing underneath. Yeah, that's pretty much what I expected. Look at that, that's the seed potato. That's good, that, nothing wrong with that. I could still eat that, they still rock hard. But they're the seed potatoes that I've forgotten in the ground last year. And this is what I was expecting to get, these lovely little teeny mini potatoes and they're gonna be delicious. A little bonus crop, eh? Just got this bit of chard from last year to clear. The hens will enjoy this. And a few poppies to come out. And then we're ready for the beans. I'm just 
just going to pinch some of these little charred leaves to go in my salad for lunch. Need to eat before I start planting these beans, re-energise. Right, I've had my lunch. I'm refueled and ready to make a start. As you can see, I've got a veritable sea of beans here. Um, quite a few different types. I've got runner beans, Scarlet Emperor and a white variety, which I cannot remember the name of. I've had not fantastic germination with the runner beans last year and this year. I think actually it's those white beans, which I can't remember the name of don't germinate that well. I've got another tree at home which I may use. They are still in the greenhouse at the minute though. So yeah, runner beans, white and red. I've got Selma zebra beans which I grew last year. I saved the seed. Um, they're like a French bean style, um, like a dappled pod. What else have I got? This one this is French French beans, a variety called Abundance. And these are another French bean called Lazy Housewife. And this tree, I've got more Selma zebra beans. I've got Pongo beans of Phil, Bill and Val. And I've got Isabel French beans. Seems like I've only got one of those that's germinated. But plenty to be going on with. I'm going to start off with the runner beans. Actually, I've got no idea whether I've got enough space here or not for all these beans, but we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I, supposedly I'm going to have to try and leave two foot between rows and about a foot between each plant. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> As you see, these are well ready to go in the ground. They're already 18 inches tall and I really should probably have the framework in first, but um, it's not going to happen today. It's too hot, too sunny. I haven't got the energy to plant and um, put the framework in at the same time. So I'll probably come up tomorrow and put the frame in. Look at that handsome blooming bean, isn't it? Okay, this is the Lazy Housewife French bean. I've got to plant them six inches apart. And apparently they say three feet between rows, but there's no way I'm doing that because I wouldn't have any room for anything else. So I'll just keep the space more or less the same as I've done for the French beans, uh, for the runner bean rows, which is about uh, 18 inches maybe. I've never grown these. French beans before, so I don't know what they'll be like. Got a few different varieties this year that I haven't tried before. Going in with these abundance beans now. These are quite a lot smaller. Not sure why that is. Well, 
this has worked out perfectly. My last row is the pongos that Bill and Val sent me. I'll get these in here. with gardener's regret I'm afraid a couple of weeks ago I planted out the courgettes no it wasn't the courgettes it was the um, squash and I put 12 into one border and I knew it was too much anyway I can't stop regretting it <laughs> it's tormenting us so I'm going to take some of them out I'm going to thin them out a bit uh, and I'm going to put them into these buckets this is the border in question. As you can see, it looks absolutely fine at the minute, of course, but we all know how big the squash plants get. Um, yeah, my, my theory was that was because they were a smaller squash variety, the plants themselves would be smaller, but I'm not at all sure that that's true. It might be the plant grows huge and just gets lots more squash on. Could work either way. Anyway, I'm going to take a few of them out. I haven't been in long so they haven't grown many roots this compost that i'm putting them in is a mix of um, semi-decomposed or largely decomposed wood chips and compost out of the hen run i'm really trying to not buy any more shop or compost i'm just finding it so expensive and uh, when you're planting the containers as big as this it doesn't go anyway so i'm hoping these will do all right in this medium Looks like a very happy little plant. Let's hope that doesn't change. Right, I've taken three out, which doesn't really seem a lot, but actually it looks much better. They're all about a metre apart now. Um, and that's all I can bring myself to take out this time. I've got this one bucket left, so I've got masses of spare tomato plants. I'm just going to pop one in here. I've been putting lots in pots at home in the back garden. Um, I think I had about 40 odd tomato plants. Far too many. But there's always a way to get them in the ground if you try hard enough. There we go. You know, I might do them as well. I usually put flowers in those old buckets, but... I think I'll stick a tomato in each of them. Well, I think my regret has been assuaged somewhat after doing that. Um, I'm going to leave you now and I'm going to start and plant some tomatoes in amongst this garlic. Uh, hopefully that'll work out all right again. We'll see. I'm always experimenting. Catch you next time. Bye.